In George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire, the series on which Game of Thrones is based, unlike so many fantasy works, deities, although they exist in the culture, are mythical rather than real. In Martin's work, only the belief in the gods appears, not the gods themselves. And in most cases, even this belief does not give people any clear advantages. But there is at least one exception, and his name is Arglor Lord of Light. The priests of this god are perhaps the most powerful sorcerers and sorceresses of the entire cycle, and it is their god that gives them power. So I thought it would be interesting to find out who Raglor is, what kind of skills he gives to his followers, and what he is capable of. In general, Raglor has no human form, and is represented simply as a flame or the sun. The cult of Raglor worship originated in the East, most likely in Valyria. In that ancient empire there was freedom of religion, due to which there was a huge number of religious cults and currents. With the fall of Valyria, the cult of Raglor spread eastward to the free cities, and became very popular there. According to this cult, Raglor created the sun and stars in ancient times to fight the darkness. But he is always opposed by his antipode, the Great Other, who represents darkness and cold. In the struggle between Raglor and the Great Other, all life in the world takes place. Each person chooses a side and either brings Raglor's victory closer or contributes to his enemy. The third is not given. According to the legends of this cult, about five thousand years before the events of Game of Thrones in the world announced the Messiah of Raglor, Azor Ahai, a great warrior who came into the world to defeat the Great Other and establish in the world of eternal summer. As sacrifices were developed in this cult, Azor Ahai had to kill his own wife, and in her blood, harden his sword, which then blazed and helped him defeat his enemy. But millennia later, the other gained strength and wished to plunge the entire world into endless winter and darkness. To stop him, Azor Ahai must return and finally defeat him. The Red Priests are in charge of spreading the cult of Arglor, and at the same time searching for the new Azor Ahai. They live mostly in the free cities, but there are some even in Westeros, such as Melisandre and Thoros. And here's where I think we come to the most interesting part. Because Raglor gives his followers priests not illusory faith, but quite tangible and practical gifts. Let's remember, first of all, the legend, according to which it was Arglor's priests, who caused the cataclysm in which all of Valyria perished. Perhaps it's just a legend, but after the following facts from the books you begin to believe even in it. Let's start with the simplest of things, the gift of foresight. Many priests of Raglor can look into the flames, see events that are just about to happen, and not only see, but change them. Melisandre, Thoros, and Makoro definitely possessed this skill. The Red Priests could also command the elements. Melisandre could set fire to objects at a distance, and she, as well as Makoro, could summon tailwinds for ships. The High Priest of Volantis named Benero could write in the air with his burning fingers. And what is worth the ability to set swords on fire? which was possessed by Melisandre and even Thoros. At first they did it with the help of special mixtures, but there are several cases when swords were ignited simply by their willpower. It gave excellent health. Melisandre mentioned that she didn't require food or drink to live at all, and was not afraid of poisons. Cures, and even resurrection. Also the Red Priests could use magic to cure wounds that no medicine could cure. For example, Priest Makoro cured Victorian Greyjoy's arm, and not just cured it, but made it much stronger. And the priest Thoros resurrected the knight Beric Dondarrion several times with the Kiss of Fire. I don't remember anyone in Game of Thrones being equal in magical powers to Raglor's followers, so I think it's fair to call him the most powerful deity in this fictional universe. What do you think? <laughs>